Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Soren Kierkegaard. JJ's gonna keep coming to visit you, okay? I know. And I will write to you. Ready, Diana? It's time. Don't rush me. It's time to go. We met. No, I I'm sorry. I should have introduced myself. Carol Atkinson. No physical contact. I know you. What you do to me will be nothing compared to what my dad will do to you. Listen to what she wants. She's begging you to kill somebody right in front of her. Your life has been about violence, and if you do this, Lindsay's will be too. You want that? Kill him. You're Lindsay Vaughn. Um, no. Carol. Carol Atkinson. It's nice to meet you. Your mother's an angel. So glad you had this time together. Let's go, Diana. Time to go. Your brain is playing tricks on you. You keep saying her, because it wasn't Scratch who framed me. It's a woman. Time, time to, go. to go. Time to go. Campus sex assault where a woman says a man attacked her and the precautions the university is taking. Plus controversy over emergencies in Elkhorn. Who wants to run their own fire hall and why the mayor says it's a bad idea. With Advil, you'll ask, what twisted ankle? What muscle strain? Advil makes pain a distant memory. Nothing works faster, stronger, or longer. What pain? Advil. It's time for the Sears Labor Day event. Save up to 40% on top brand appliances like this Kenmore Top Load Laundry Pair, which can wash up to 14 towels at once, now 44% off. Plus, free delivery on all appliances over $3.99 when you use your Sears card. Hurry in. Event ends soon. Do we really have to choose him to be our next spokesperson? He's so boring. Hmm. Sounds like you're on the fence. Why don't I just leave you my resume? <laughs> Yes, it's laminated. No thanks. Tired. Try the new caramel m and Ow. You always pay your insurance on time. Tap one little bumper and up go your rates. What good is having insurance if you get punished for using it? For drivers with accident forgiveness, Liberty Mutual won't raise your rates due to your first accident. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Russia Week continues, and Steven learns how to be an oligarch tonight. I need your honest assessment. Can you continue this mission? This is a Bravo one. We got this. You can run, but you can't hide. RPG, 12 o'clock. You make it back home. Make it back home to us. Oh, well. SEAL Team. New CBS This Fall. This is KMTV 3 News Now, live at 10. It just is very alarming to see um, things like that happen and show up here next to the campus. The alert came out this afternoon, a co-ed at UNO reporting that a man sexually assaulted her in a dorm on the Dodge campus. Students are on edge because the guy is still on the loose. Then later, another alert, this time a man in his car exposing himself to people in a parking garage on the Pacific Street campus. Tonight we went to both locations. As you can imagine, people are shaken. Reporter Maya Signs tells us what happened. Maya? Yeah, Jen, Craig, UNO and OPD are now investigating two separate instances that occurred here on campus, not even 24 hours apart. 
UNO and OPD are urging students and staff to be cautious after a student reported she was sexually assaulted on campus. It happened inside the Maverick Residence Hall around 10.30 Tuesday night. A student told OPD she was assaulted by a male approximately 18 years old, not believed to be associated with the school. The suspect was described as a white male wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, blue jeans and gray shoes. He was last seen leaving the residence hall towards Elmwood Park. It just is very alarming to see um, things like that happen and show up here next to the campus. I actually texted my family and I was like, well, day seven and there's already sexual assault. It was slightly concerning. And now, not even 24 hours later, UNO police sent out another alert, notifying students of three reports of a white male driving a gray 2017 Hyundai Elantra, luring students to his car, then revealing his genitals. That's not tolerable, and I, I would hate to see that. Um, especially someday I'll be a father myself and if I if my daughter is worried about walking you know on the sidewalk to her car after class that's just absurd. UNO Police Chief Charlotte Evans says these incidents should be a reminder for students and staff to be vigilant. Number one is be aware of your surroundings. Uh, sometimes acting like you're on the phone talking to somebody is helpful. We also uh, will walk with somebody or provide escorts for people uh, if they're in a situation in which they feel unsafe. It's something I'm going to have to look out for more and just like be super careful of my surroundings knowing that it can happen anywhere you know to anyone. Now, Omaha police are investigating the sexual assault. And UNO is emphasizing to students to use a buddy system and to make sure they are extra vigilant of their surroundings, especially while these two suspects remain on the loose. Reporting live from UNO, Maya Science 3 News Now. Turning now to the ongoing hurricane relief efforts in Texas and Louisiana. At least 21 people have died as a result of what was Hurricane Harvey. Some three dozen members of the Nebraska National Guard spent another day conducting rescue missions. The Omaha World Herald sent us these photos from today's rescues. Their helicopters have flown hundreds of people and more than 100 pets to safety. There's no timeline for how long their mission in Texas will continue. Same topic. Omaha World Herald report Aaron Duffy is the only Omaha reporter in the flood zone. She and her photographer have been flying with the Nebraska National Guard. She says today alone she witnessed the rescue of 87 people, 17 dogs and two cats. Here are a few tweets that she sent out. Oil refinery underwater. Look at this. Oil slicks float on the surface. People are being dropped off via dump truck at Port Arthur School. Moments ago, I had the opportunity to Skype with Erin Duffy. She described what it's like to see the damage and devastation while flying in a helicopter on rescue missions with the National Guard. Today, we were in kind of rural areas. We saw an oil refinery that, um, you know, there was oil all over the surface of the water. Um, we saw livestock struggling in the water. We saw people's houses, you know, up to the second story covered in water, um, cars submerged and jutting out at all angles on the highway. Um, it's it's pretty surreal. Duffy said people are thankful when they are rescued, but also unsure about what their next step will be. Aaron Duffy and Chris Mockian are the only local journalists in the Harvey disaster zone. You can follow their work on Omaha.com and in the Omaha World Herald. They have shown numerous photos of pets being rescued. And on that note, the Nebraska Humane Society is hosting a crate, collar and leash drive tomorrow. NHS says you can drop off those items from 9 until 7 at their headquarters at 90th and 4th. The donations will go to help animals in Texas. Harvey is now a tropical storm. It continues to move north. The system made landfall for a second time today, pounding the Texas Louisiana state line with more rain and flooding. Teams of volunteers are on the ground. More shelters opening to evacuees. Meg Oliver has more from Houston. While the threat of heavy rain for Houston has ended, Harvey is still making its presence felt in the Lone Star State. The unrelenting storm system made landfall for a second time Wednesday, unleashing high winds, rain and flash floods in the coastal communities of Port Arthur in Beaumont. All my years on this earth, I've never seen anything like this. This is very devastating. In all, the National Guard and the Coast Guard have rescued nearly 13,000 people. Nearly 300,000 homes and businesses have no electricity. Harvey has also driven about 32,000 Texans into shelters. You must be so tired. Yes, ma'am. 
Among them, Lynetta Woodley, a mother of four, who arrived at the NRG shelter earlier in the day. It's like right now you got somewhere to sleep, but you don't know where you're going after you leave here. And that's the hardest part for me. Thousands of volunteers like Nadine Nunnery have turned out to help. It's beautiful. It's just showing the unity. It's showing that we all have something in common. We all care about each other, you know, regardless of the skin we're in or our beliefs or whatever issues we may have. What really matters is life. On Tuesday, police found the bodies of two grandparents and their four grandchildren inside a van that disappeared in floodwaters, part of the rising death toll attributed to the storm. Meg Oliver, CBS News, Houston. After Hurricane Katrina hit 12 years ago, hundreds of evacuees from New Orleans came to Omaha. Now some in here, here in Omaha are planning in case Texas evacuees from Harvey come here as well. In 2005, evacuees stayed in the Civic Auditorium in Omaha. The Douglas County Health Department held a meeting today to go over plans in case Harvey survivors arrive. But we do know that with the long holiday weekend come up, but we want to be prepared. We don't want to have to do it. Uh, without at least some for, for planning, for knowledge of what's going on. We've been through these sorts of things before. We plan for disasters all the time. So we wanted to make our staff aware of the needs that might be out there that we'll have to address. Health Department spokesperson Phil Rooney also says they are not sure if they'll see evacuees and if they do come, it could be weeks before they get here. Generous people from St. Patrick's Church in Elkhorn are hoping to fill a semi with donations for those who have lost everything in Texas. Volunteer firefighters Josiah Black and Mike Frost teamed up with Amanda Pfeiffer, whose brother is working in Houston as an EMT. She put out a call to fellow parishioners at St. Patrick's. The firefighters will deliver the donations to the Houston area. This man will drive the truck once it's full. I have no idea what to expect when we get there. They hope to have the truck filled in the next 48 hours. As of tonight, it's half full. The Friday night lights will reach further than Nebraska football fields this week in an effort to help aid those hit hardest by Hurricane Harvey. Scott Catholic announced today that 25% of gate fees at Friday's game will go to the American Red Cross Hurricane Harvey Disaster Relief Fund. The school will also accept donations. The game against Elkhorn South kicks off Friday at 7 p.m. You can join the relief efforts by making a donation to the American Red Cross. Just call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcross.org. You can find a link and more information at our website, 3newsnow.com. Now, your weather alert first forecast. And Harvey continues to slowly work its way across Louisiana and East Texas, just pounding the area with heavy rainfall. It is now lifted mainly to the north of Lake Charles, getting close to Alexandria. This storm system has been downgraded from a tropical storm to a tropical depression and will keep moving to the northeast, not only across Louisiana, but eventually Mississippi and then into Tennessee and Kentucky and still is going to be an area of low pressure that will move across the Appalachians even into early Friday morning and still going to dump significant rain fall across this region ranging anywhere from about two to more than 12 inches of rain. I am tracking a cold front that will be impacting us. I'll let you know if we can expect any rain here over the next couple of days. New at 10 on 3 News Now. Two more Omaha police officers involved in the in custody death of a mentally ill man back in June might lose their jobs. Our partners at the Omaha World Herald reporting tonight. The chief is recommending firing officers Michaela Mead and Jennifer Strudel. Both remain on leave for their roles in the arrest of Zachary Bearheels at the Bucky's at 60th and Center. Other officers punched Bearheels in the head and zapped him with a taser a dozen times. The 29-year-old Bearheels later died. The city fired officers Scotty Payne and Ryan McClarity. They are now facing criminal charges. If you live in Elkhorn, there is a major development tonight when it comes to public safety. The Elkhorn Suburban Fire District tells the city of Omaha it no longer wants to have a partnership for fire and emergency response. Reporter Miranda Christian on how this might affect people who call for help in years to come. The city has concerns about the split with the Elkhorn Suburban Fire District because right now Elkhorn has one fire station that's right here and they would be responsible for covering all of this area in red, which is about 20,000 people. 
The city and Elkhorn Suburban were going to negotiate a new deal to replace the current one, which expires in 2018. But Elkhorn Suburban wants their own department. And I'd like to see more. Uh, all I can judge by is, is how the district ran before the city of Omaha took over, and they seemed to do a fine job at that time. Elkhorn resident David Rossacker says there seems to be a lot of unanswered questions, but there's one obvious fact. Elkhorn Suburban only has one fire station. Well, it, it seems to me that, you know, we'll be fine where we live, obviously, because of our proximity to the current station. But with the northern part of the district, I'm sure they'll have to add another station. New Elkhorn Fire Chief Travis Harlow says the plan is to build another fire station on the north side of town. But Mayor Gene Stother says that will be a tax burden on residents. It's, it's basically an expensive duplication of services that we could provide better and more flexible service for less cost. The worry is that the response time to get out to North Elkhorn would put lives in danger. It would be nicer if the, the one closest to us is active, but um, the other one across town really isn't too far away. Eric Schultz lives north of Maple. He thinks the situation will resolve itself. I'm pretty positive something will get straightened out and we'll, we'll have two functioning fire departments then. Omaha Fire says in 2016 they had 1,100 calls to Elkhorn and had five stations supporting that area. Uh, it, it does put a, a strain on you mm -hmm. to know that you have the responsibility of keeping the members in that area safe. The Elkhorn Suburban Board said they're making this decision due to money. The city could not offer them a fair and equitable price. The city says they are still open to negotiations. Reporting in studio, I'm Miranda Christian, 3 News Now. A key piece of the new Capital District near the CenturyLink Center in Omaha is up and running with lots of fanfare. The Marriott Hotel opened to guests on August 8th, but tonight the operators held an official ribbon cutting. The Marriott has a grand ballroom, a rooftop pool, and more than 300 rooms. This is just part of what is happening in downtown Omaha. There's been so many developments down here in the last 20 years, and it truly this part of town is becoming our, our economic engine. A new occupation tax is playing a key role in funding the development of the Capital District. For months, we've been telling you about a rash of crime in the Hillsborough neighborhood in northwest Omaha. Tonight, residents want to put a stop to it. Car break-ins near 138th and Maple egged houses and cars in northwest Omaha, and windows shot out with pellet guns are just a few examples of the damage reporter Miranda Christian has covered. Affected residents gathered tonight at a park to speak their minds, band together, and listen to OP on what they can do to avoid the surge in crime. Um, about keeping, being proactive about keeping your house um, kind of protected and locked down with lights and security and just being aware of your neighborhood and your neighbors and trying to help each other out. It's the perfect opportunity to just get the message out there that this is what needs to happen. People need to band together, get neighborhood watches, get people together exactly like this meeting, talk about this stuff, get it out there and band together to fight crime. Omaha police say the best thing you can do to keep your valuables safe is keep your doors locked, keep them out of sight, and don't leave marked boxes on the curb. An update now to a story we've been following for the past two months. Orphans brought here from the Dominican Republic by Grace Baptist Church in Papillion are heading home. 13 children spent time here getting a head start on education and life skills thanks to the church. There was a farewell dinner tonight. The kids will head back tomorrow morning after a wonderful experience. We've got six suitcases full of shoes, about a half a dozen suitcases full of school supplies, extra clothes for the kids at the orphanage, all kinds of things. So it's been a a wonderful experience, more than I think everybody bargained for. That is fantastic. Grace Baptist Church was trying to raise $100,000. The money will go toward buying a van for their new friends in the DR. Labor Day is generally the unofficial start of election season, and this year candidates are getting a very early jump on the 2018 midterm. Next, my exclusive interview with Governor Pete Ricketts. From your tax dollars to funding for your kids' schools, my one-on-one -on -one with the state's top elected official, next. Woodhouse Ford is the number one F-Series dealer 14 years in a row. We deliver knowledgeable staff, service, and selection at three locations. Stop by today and check out the summer sales event. This is Woodhouse Ford.
Celebrate Labor Day the Nebraska Furniture Mart way with huge holiday savings and 30 month financing. We're taking the Mart's already low tag price on furniture, carpet and area rugs and slashing it another 12%. All appliances are on sale with special deals on select products. All electronics are on sale too and store wide 30 month financing takes your budget even further. Selection, brand names, expert help all in one place during the biggest event for the Labor Day holiday at Nebraska Furniture Mart. I was proud of my job. I was middle class and it meant a better life for my daughter. But with more foreign competition, I got laid off. America's tax code is so complicated, we can't be as competitive. Thousands of jobs like mine are lost to places like China. So when I see Congress working to cut taxes for working families and bring jobs back, I know how that matters. Tell Congressman Don Bacon, keep fighting for tax reforms that bring the middle class back. Woodhouse Ford is the number one F-Series dealer 14 years in a row. We deliver knowledgeable staff, service, and selection at three locations. Stop by today and check out the summer sales event. This is Woodhouse Ford. The 3 News Now Mobile Storm Tracker, sponsored by Jensen Tire and Auto. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts has already announced he's running for re-election in 2018. Economic development and job creation are a couple of key issues he plans to emphasize. This week I went to Lincoln and sat down with Nebraska's top elected official for a half hour. I dug deeper on issues that affect everyone in Omaha. As we sit here approaching Labor Day 2017, what's the biggest issue in the state of Nebraska? Well, just in general, what we want to do is look for ways to be able to grow our state. Governor Pete Ricketts rattled off big development projects that are coming to Nebraska. From, say, Costco investing in Fremont. I was just at Hendricks Genetics in Grand Island. They just opened up a new chicken hatchery there. Uh, obviously, we just brought Facebook to Papillion. And he was talking trade, specifically Nebraska exports, to Japan and China as we headed down the hallways of the capital. But there is one drag on the state economy our revenue this year was down. Something that we heard during the budget process and legislative session that led to funding cuts. Why? About 20% of our state gross economy relates back to agriculture. And farm income has been cut in half since 2012 and 2013. So when farmers and ranchers see their income go down, they tighten their belts, they cut, control, they cut their spending and that ripples through our entire economy. For years, the governor has pushed for tax reform. So I asked him about the property value controversy in Douglas County. Home values rose in 2017. The assessor has warned it's likely going to happen again in 2018, that people generally take that to mean their property taxes will soar. But just in general, just because a, a valuation goes up doesn't mean the taxes have to. If your local entity takes the levy down, then your taxes can stay the same. Which led us to money for schools. The Miller District has a $6 million shortfall that administrators say is the result of years of shrinking state aid. They are now looking to increase the school tax bill. So is Westside, where a mail-in election is going on right now. He counters. Despite the fact that our budget only grew at 0.6%, that's 0.16% overall for state budget, our commitment to edu education grew at around 2%. So you can see the state is significantly prioritizing K through 12 education. As for the state patrol controversy, the governor says it is one of his top priorities to have a new superintendent in place very soon. And temperatures will continue to keep dropping as we go into the overnight hours into the low 60s. I'll let you know what you can expect for the rest of your morning commute in just a moment.